Welcome to the second episode in a new series that I'm running on my channel, a week of neutral looks only using my Pat McGrath palettes. So today we're going to go for a very soft, not brown look, but just something very soft and very airy. It's going to be, I think, a relatively short video and it's not really going to be in the context of pairing Pat McGrath palettes. This video is not going to be additionally included in my pet pairing series, it's just going to be exclusive to this uh, playlist. So if you wanted to find the rest of the looks that will be in this series, then just check out the whole playlist. Now, I've already applied my brows, my concealer, my eyeshadow primer, and I'm going to proceed with foundation. I'm going to take my Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude foundation. It's a foundation that I'm working on panning, so that's why I'm a little bit more focused on it, and you see it quite a bit featured on my channel. But I'm just very very determined to finish it because I think I'm relatively close and it's also a really nice foundation I just really enjoy using it yesterday I used my MAC face and body foundation and I had forgotten what little coverage that foundation offers basically within a couple of hours after I applied it a lot of it was already gone especially in the area of my nose because my nose was running really bad the last few days I think it was a result of hay fever but it could also have been a mix of hay fever and COVID because today it feels a little bit more peaceful but it could also be that I took my antihistamines for several days in a row and that's why it feels better. We shall never know, it's one of those mysteries. But anyway, I just had forgotten what little coverage that foundation offers. And I remember I purchased it when I was pregnant. Because around the time that I was pregnant, once again around this time of the year when I had my hay fever, I developed these really awful eczema spots all over my face and my regular foundations were not working for me and the only foundation that looked half decent on my skin was that MAC face and body foundation and basically since then I hardly ever used that foundation so I had forgotten how extremely sheer coverage it is. It promises to be a really hot and sweaty day and since I'm in quarantine I'm basically working from home so I'm going to take my Charlotte Tilbury um, Flawless Finish Powder to set my face in the hopes that it's not going to melt away within the first half an hour that I'm sitting outside because I've positioned my office outside in the backyard. The perks of being in quarantine in the summer is that you can work from your backyard so all in all not too shabby. Next for my bronzer I'm going to be taking the Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel bronzer which is one of my favorite cream bronzers. I've had this for quite a few years. It's still going strong. There is like five crap tons of product in there so I will probably never finish this. I think my children and grandchildren will still be able to make use of this bronzer. So now that I have used this bronzer and the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer in the shade medium, the one from a Charlotte definitely goes on darker off the get-go because you, you could also see in the pan that that color was much deeper, but I think if you start layering this one, it kind of goes on to the same level of depth and pigmentation, but it just takes a bit more building up, whereas the one from Charlotte is just pigment from the get-go. Next for my blush, I'm going to take this Suku Sh Shimmering Liquid Blush. It's like a gel liquid blush in this beautiful coral color. Again, I've had this for several years. I probably squirted out too much, unfortunately. I'm going to just spread this lightly on the back of my hand like this and pick up the product that way because I feel like that is the easiest way to apply it most evenly on my cheeks. So I'm going to take a bit and start lightly buffing it into the skin. It's a beautiful coral color. This is a really wonderful formula, I believe. They still sell those uh, shimmering liquid blushes. I've seen them even on Cult Beauty. So if you're looking for a really good like gel texture liquid type of formula, then I highly recommend this. It's beautiful, very natural on the skin, very buildable and just a really, really lovely formula altogether. And I've had mine for at least three years and it's still going strong as you can see so also a very long-lasting formula even though it's a liquid blush. Sticking with Suku for my highlighter I'm going to take this melting powder highlighter that was released with their summer collection for 2022 and highlight my cheekbones with that. This is again not a powder formula it's like a cream to powder formula so I think it would work really well with something that is a little bit more of like a cream gel texture underneath. I mean it works well with everything but sometimes with liquid and cream products one wonders how well they're going to mix with powders and this is not necessarily a classic powder so I think it works really well the two textures 
melt with each other really well. Usually at this point I would like set all the powders that are on my cheeks using Fix Plus but since technically there are really no powders on my cheeks today I'm going to skip that step and we're immediately going to proceed to the eye look so I'm going to actually zoom you in a little bit. Okay, I think this is enough. So as you have also seen from the thumbnail today, we're going to be doing a very soft look using the uh, Fleur Fantasia quad from Pat McGrath Labs. This is not a quad that necessarily garners a lot of like positive amorous feelings from people and I totally uh, get it. Sometimes I look at it and I feel like it's very incohesive, other times I look at it and I think all the colors are really pretty. I have very still conflicting feelings about it but the matter of fact is that when I start using it I actually really enjoy every single look that I uh, do either with all the shades together or like some of the shades together and the shades individually. So today we're going to be doing a look with these three shades over here. I'm not going to use the pastel lavender color. It's a beautiful shade. I highly recommend that shade especially in your inner corners it makes for an absolutely stunning inner corner pop of color but today I'm not taking it in that direction because we're staying more in the neutral realm of things now the first shade I'm going to go into is probably also what's going to be my favorite shade in this eyeshadow palette and it's this beautiful sort of like pastel peach color if you really want it to stick to uh, this eyeshadow palette whoops for both your eyes and your face you could use this as your blush and this as your highlighter but given how much highlighter and blush I have in my collection I didn't really feel the necessity for that I adore this peach shade Pat McGrath has quite a few of those like peachy matte shades in her collection there is one in the Divine Rose 2 palette there's one in the Utopian Dream palette there's this one here in Fleur Fantasia can't think if there are any more maybe there are more but I think this one might be my favorite for the purpose that I like using these shades for. I usually use them like this as transition shades so I don't necessarily need them to be too punchy and too pigmented and too vibrant and I find that the other two shades especially in the one in the Hitopian Dream palette is quite vibrant and I just love how this shade has that soft um, undertone to it so it has a little bit of those white pastel tones but without looking chalky or too pastel it's just the perfect balance between like a peachy coral and a pastel coral i love this shade so so much next i'm going to take my nyx glitter glue deposit it in here and apply the tiniest bit of that on my lids again i just work it on the back of my hand and i use my fingers to stamp it onto the lid and then using a brush I'm going to go into this shade here which is like a light coppery peach champagne shade and I'm going to use that basically all over the lid as well as in my inner corner as a highlight. I really really like this shade, I'm very partial um, for these types of like coppery peachy pink duochromes. I've always had a soft spot for them so I really enjoy this one as well. It also looks beautiful as a highlighter by the way. I have used it quite a few times for that purpose and it is really beautiful for that too. You can even take whatever is left on the brush and just run it here very gently underneath your brows. Just on the brow bone as a bit of a highlight effect. And over top of this coppery shade I'm going to just use my finger and apply a little bit of this shade which has that beautiful like orchid violet type of reflect and I'm going to just try to mesh the two shades together as I did also in my previous look with one of the astro shades just to create a little bit of like an interesting effect I think these two shades layer really beautifully together and you can create either a very soft effect or you can go for full on wham bam you know sparkle and pigmentation if you were to wet your brush or if you applied this eyeshadow as a standalone shade over a glitter glue but I like the versatility of how you can just layer it very gently over top of other shades to create like a very soft and nice effect and I hope that that's coming a little bit across on camera in real life it looks really pretty and really soft I'm not sure how you're enjoying it uh, through the camera now to finish off the look I'm going to go back into the peach matte shade and run that on my lower lash line like I said, this is an extremely simple look. I'm just going to apply a little bit of like this highlighting uh, pencil. It's like a light gold champagne here in my waterline to complete the look.
For me, this is the kind of look which definitely grants curling your lashes and applying as much mascara as possible to give yourself that like false lash effect because I think with a soft look like this, a nice full lash really like elevates the look. But that's just my personal take. You may prefer to also go a little bit more light-handed on the mascara to keep it even softer. Keeping it soft on the lips, I applied a combination of the Negligé Satin Allure lipstick from Pat McGrath part of her Bridgerton 2 collection and over top of that, just for a little bit of a more juicy effect, I applied the Lost Gloss in Bronze Temptation. I think uh, Negligé makes a beautiful pairing for this look because Negligé has these like slight peachy tones to it which complement uh, both the face makeup and the eyes really really well. Overall, uh, I think this is a really beautiful, like, soft, summer, more neutral leaning look. Don't forget to let me know what you thought about this look. As usual, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!